and welcome back to All of Amber's Wands, a study of wands in the wizarding world. I'm Amber, and today we are discussing Horace Slughorn's wand. This episode was originally meant to be about Albus Dumbledore's first wand, but I'm afraid I need much more time and research to do a proper wand analysis. So we're back to a different Hogwarts professor. I also wanted to do this episode because Slughorn shares a birthday with a special friend of the channel, Brittany from Brittany's Magic Trunk. These special Slytherins have a birthday on April 28th. I'm so sorry it was so belated, but happy birthday, friend. Professor Horace Slughorn is one of the few Slytherins who is not a Death Eater in the series. He was a potions master at Hogwarts from 1931 to 1981 and returning for Harry's sixth year in 1996. He prided himself on his connections to the famous, talented, and powerful by feeling that he had some sort of impact on them while he was teaching them. He did not wish for these things for himself, only to have that cushion of safety around him, and that sense of importance. Dumbledore was able to convince him to return to Hogwarts to collect Harry, since Harry's mother was actually one of his favorites. The motive behind his return stems from an interaction he had with a young Tom Riddle. Tom Riddle went on to become Lord Voldemort, and Slughorn was the one who gave him that vital information about Horcruxes. Slughorn grew to regret this, once seeing what Voldemort became, and believing that he succeeded in making at least one Horcrux, which we know definitely happened. He defended the school during the Battle of Hogwarts, and continued to teach there until 2016. As a former head of Slytherin House, his portrait now hangs in the common room. We have a full background for his wand, so let's dive right in and find out how well it suits him. Wand Wood Slughorn's wand is made out of cedar wood underneath all of the decor. Ollivander describes cedar wood to prefer the discerning and perceptive. They want owners with keen eyes and foresight into other people. Ollivander's father said, you can never fool a cedar carrier. Their shrewdness made them more aware of those around them than you might expect. He also knows that they want strong characters with an absurd amount of loyalty. Now, you can see where the Venn diagram overlaps with shrewdness being one of Slytherin's main traits. There are many references to Cedarwood throughout various cultures all throughout history, and I will only lightly touch on some of them from what I have found. In North America, some indigenous cultures consider cedar to be the tree of life. It is long-lasting, prevents pests such as insects and squirrels, and also has many medicinal properties. Thus, it is greatly valued and respected. There was once a massive forest of cedar in Lebanon, of which now only a small few groves remain. This cedar forest has had a focal point throughout many tales in history. It is mentioned several times in the Bible, with cedar being called the glory of Lebanon. It also says Solomon built Jerusalem out of timber from cedar and fir wood. In Mesopotamia, the oldest epic ever written features this cedar of Lebanon forest. The Epic of Gilgamesh says this forest is divine and godly, with humans and demigods going to war over it. This gave it another name, Cedar of God, and Gilgamesh also used cedar wood to build his city. To me, it's absolutely fascinating that these stories go back so far and have such a vast impact. The Epic of Gilgamesh is around 4,000 years old, just to start with. How cool is that? I also wanted to point out, before I wrap up the wood section, that I think there's a connection between Slughorn's profession and Cedar's cultural relationship to medicine. Slughorn teaches potions, and potions are not always for medical use, but a large majority that we see of potions relate to physical or mental health and well-being. With Cedar being so connected to medicinal purposes, I doubt that this is just a coincidence, because we know that the author tends to have a lot of connections for various cultures and history. Wand Lore This wand's core is the heartstring of a dragon. Normally this can mean that the owner is combative or fiery in some other manner. Personality, energy, or something like that. Slughorn is not any of those things, at least not to me. He is not one to take up arms and engage in any sort of conflict. No, he likes things to run smoothly and exactly just how he likes it. 
He did fight for Hogwarts at the end of the war, but I think that was more of an outlier for him. A way for him to square away his guilt for his part in Voldemort's attempt at immortality. But out of the three cores that Ollivander uses, Dragon is the least loyal to its owner. This isn't to say that they are completely willy-nilly with who will use them, but as with most things about wands, no wand is the same and therefore no wand is predictable, just like how people are. I do think though that this does show a bit of fickleness in Slughorn, especially when matched with his wand's flexibility, which I will talk about next. Flexibility and length. Slughorn's wand is fairly flexible and 10 and 1 4 inches long. Flexibility, in short, shows how likely the wizard is to change their minds, ideals, morals, and allegiances. Now, considering that with the Dragon Heartring core and what we see of Slughorn refusing to take sides and engage, I can't say I'm surprised by any of this. The length can be summarized by how big one's personality is. Ever met someone whose very presence fills the room? Usually a longer wand. Anyone who is more reserved and along the sidelines tend to have shorter wands. This is exactly the case for Slughorn's wand. Ollivander wands tend to range from 8 inches to 15 inches, so being just over 10 would make it along the smaller side. This to me follows his tendency to hang back and let others do the work for him. This is one of the many benefits of having as many connections as he does. All in all, these stats match with the wood and the core, make perfect sense to Slughorn. Fun facts. First thing you will notice about this wand is how fitting it is to Slughorn's name, visually. The end has protrusions that resemble a slug, and along the blade here, they have swirls that look like the trail the slugs leave behind. Due to this, there is the thought that his wand is a family heirloom like I mentioned with Lucius Malfoy's wand. But I don't think that matters much, because yes, it is perfect to his name, but the rest of the wand stats suit him so well, I don't really think it's a family wand, I think it's his personal wand. In the movies, the wand is made out of metal and is the only wand like that in the series, which I thought was just neat. I always love it when we have a wand that we know the full stats for. It helps being able to riddle out the secrets and the deeper meaning of wand lore when I have the full details alongside with a character analysis for the person who wields it. This way I can learn how the properties really correlate instead of theorizing and assuming like I would with an unknown wand status. But tell me what you think. Do you like knowing the wand stats or is the debate and guessing game part of the fun for you? with that, I will jump into the wrap-up. This month is quite busy, so my hope is to get Dumbledore's episode recorded early so that it will drop on time. In personal life, I'm going to be moving to another state, so getting my affairs in order has been keeping me very busy. In channel news, I am attending a live show for Potterless Podcast and my local Comic-Con at the end of the month, all of which I am very excited about. Next Saturday, May 14th, I will be doing a live stream with Britney's Magic Trunk on her channel. This is just a chat about Harry Potter with her geeking out with Melly Mel and McDorks. The stream starts at 8 p.m. Eastern Time or 5 p.m. in Arizona for me. We would love to see you there in the chat, so please keep an eye out on my Instagram for any links or hop onto Britney's channel and set a reminder. I hope to see you all there. Grab some flu powder and head over to my socials down below. Don't forget to share with your wizarding loved ones. Links to these magical friends will be in the description too, along with links to all of the work done by my amazing producer, editor, and agent, Corey. Go share some love and Lumos with these amazing people. Don't forget to send me an owl with anything and everything that you want to know about Albus Dumbledore's first wand. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please like this video, comment, and subscribe. Share with your wizarding loved ones. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.